Now, today we meet once more. I think the last time we met, we had that problem. I gave you to get a solution whereby we had a staircase, we had the four lights, and then I wanted you to design a circuit such that as you go up the stairs, once you reach a switching point, once you flip it on, the light ahead switches on, the one behind you switches off. And then you go until you reach the top. And then the same sequence should apply when we are coming down the staircase. Now, in that uh, design bit I'd given you, I'd shown you with four single two-way switches. Now, I tried to redesign with the four and to suit the conditions as per the description of my customer, I found I could not cope with the four, so I added in a five. That will tell you that sometimes a customer may give you some information and have his idea how it should be done, but sometimes you may need to do some remodifications. So this kind of setup here, now this would pass for a schematic diagram. And then the wiring for this one here would look something like this. So I have my five switches. Five, so this will be my uh, common terminal, common one, common, common, common. And this is where the switches will be flipping in, that one position, that's the other one. That is one position, that one, that one, and that one. And then for my lighting, I look them across, one, two, three, four, across the common. I have one of the pole oops, one of the poles. I loop on the normally the place where we connect our straps. I loop them like that. And then for the other pole, I loop in the other side. Now let's assume this is my life, and that is my 
neutral. Go and assume we are coming down from this end here. Now, as you can see, they have drawn them. All the lights, they are all off. As you can see, they all turned up to be connected to the neutral pole. So once I get to the first switching position, I'll flip this one from that position to come down to that position. And when that one happens, my light will come up here, go through that lamp, back here, and down to the neutral. So the first lamp goes on. Then I move around, I come to the next position. When I come to the next position, this switch will be flipped from there down to that position there. Now you can see, when I flip this switch here, the path for that lamp, which was going through here back to the neutral, has been removed. So in fact, this lamp now is connected one end to the live, the other end also to the live. Now what happened to lamp two? So there is this live coming all the way up to that point there, then through the lamp B to that point there, and then connection to the neutral, back to the neutral. So now this lamp goes off, this one, was initially on, if you assume up to be on, this one was off, this one was off, and this one was off. So when I come to the next position, now this one goes off, and this one comes on, and this one is still off, and this one is still off. Then I move to the next switching position. Now the path for this lamp here was to that that switching uh, connection there to the neutral. So when I flip this one here over to the other side, like that, now that one will automatically go off. So this will be off, that one off, and then the live will pass through here to this point here, to that common one, and this lamp C2, sorry, lamp C is the one that comes on through connection of this C here back to the neutral. So this one is still off, this one is still off, this one is still, this one is still, the one we have switched on, so this one comes on, and this one is still off. So if you take that one to be off, and this one to be on for the lamps. So this one is on, then I move to the next switching position. When I come up to here, this one, I flip it over, when I flip it over, it comes to that position. Now when I flip this one over, the path for this lamp to the neutral is disconnected. But then for this other lamp here, the life comes in all the way up to that point there. Coming up there through this C, the lamp D comes on, and then back to the neutral position. So this one is still off. This one is off. This one goes off. There's a changeover. And this one now comes on. And then there is the additional switch here which I've added. Now this lamp here, once I've reached my top, I need to put it up, put it off. So once I flip this one here, the path connecting this one back to the neutral is cut off. So now all the lamps are off. So once I reach my top, I can switch off the lamps to be off. And then, the same sequence, when I'm at the top, I want to go back down the stairs, then the same sequence will follow in the reverse. Once I flip this one here, this one will come on, the rest are off, then I can go all the way down. Similarly, when I get to the top, and then let's assume somebody else wants to follow me up. You'll come to the first switching positions, you'll flip this one, to that position there, and then a path will be available for that lamp there to come on for the next fellow coming in. So the sequencing I've designed here, you can get that operation when you are coming up, you can also do the same when you are going down. Many people can come up following one another, the sequence will work, and people can also go down, the sequencing will work. Now with this one, the sequencing will only work if I start from one end, I go up to the other end. Or I start from this end here, 
I go to the other end. So that would be kind of a solution to the problem that was given to us. Now, this particular one is my design. Now we have got all the various switches we have. Here I've used the single pole two-way. We have got the one-way, intermediate. You can mix all of them and maybe come up with the solution. The key thing is if you understand how the accessories you have, how they work, then you can manipulate them or rather use them to achieve what you want. So in industry, out there in the life, somebody will be giving you explanations. Sometimes the way they give you, if they list the materials, sometimes the materials you have, you may find they cannot work. You, know, you need to do the design, redesign. Remember, you are the professional. The layman will tell you the way things should be done. You as the professional, you should give your advice and don't adopt shortcuts. And I think with that, we have kind of finished uh, the lighting sub circuits, the areas I wanted to touch on. Well, I've used this, uh, the, the single pole two way. In our practicals, I'll introduce a circuit whereby we shall use the intermediate switch. And now, I can show you some of these accessories before we move on to the next uh, stage of the socket outlets. Are the kind of switches we normally have. Now this particular one is what we call the single pole uh, one way. Now you can see when they do uh, mass production they normally have provision for the L2 although it's normally in this case they have modeled this one into a single pole one way. I think this is for the purposes of mass production. They have that provision in case you want to convert the same into a two way. So there are the two terminals, one here and the other one here. And then you simply test your continuity with your meter. Now, unfortunately, this one's here. When I bought it, I unpacked it, it somehow fell apart. So when you're buying some of these things, it's good you check on the manufacturer. So this one will be operating one way here. So you simply flip it on, and then you check the continuity from here to here, whether it is operating using a continuity meter, SP one way. Now the other one is the single pole two way. Now remember I said in the circuit, this one is used uh, two of them. They are always used two in one. But sometimes when you don't have a one way, you cannot also utilize this one as a one way. Now when you look at it, there's the right up at the back here. So when you install it, it should be such that when you turn it around, you can read what's written on top. So that, especially for the one way, so that we know when you switch it on, it goes on like that for the one way, and when you flip it, it goes off. Sometimes installing it like that can cause problems. Eh? So it's good you check on the right up and then you install it in such a manner. So this one, similarly, you can check on the continuity. Again, using your meter, which I think we had an account of this one sometime earlier, just put on the continuity range, showing open loop, and then you simply put in at your terminals. Now, this is the common terminals, the one I was labeling as C in the example we had, and then you connect it to the other one. So at least I know this one is working, and then I also need to check the other one in case there is a fault somewhere in the system. That one, there is no connection. And then I flip it over, once I flip it over, this one, there should be no connection. And then this one, there should be connection. So sometimes the, these switches you are getting in the market, they are a bit faulty. So sometimes it might be worth uh, testing them before you connect them into the installation. Now the third one is the intermediate switch, which again I said there are four terminals. And I said this one comes in three types. So before you install it into the circuit, you need to know what type it is. So in this one here, again, you hold it such that you can read the information written on top. In some of the manufacturers, sometimes it indicates by putting in a, either a groove or a protrusion showing how they are connected inside. But in case it doesn't, that should be no problem. You simply use your meter and then simply redraw the circuit. 
So this one's here. When the flipping is on that side there, I can use my meter. Again, I put it into one of the uh, terminals, and then I simply just check the other terminals. Now that one, I can see diagonally, I'm getting in a feed. Now it's good you test both of them. Sometimes they have shorting, they can, there can be a problem on the inside, a shorting or something, so you check on both of them. So in that position, that one is connected to that one. So by, by uh, implication, now this one should be connected to that one. And then as I said, you also check with the other one. So in this case here, we have seen that oops, this one is connected to that one, and this one is connected to that one there. So in my drawing, here, I know that in one of the connections, this one is connected to that one, and this one is connected to the other one, like that. And then I flip over the switch, and also do the same measurements once more. So I check with this one, now I can see there is connection from top to bottom. I also need to check the other one, so that one's okay. And then from this one here, I check with that one, there is continuity, and that one is safe. So I know when I flip my switch the other way, this one will be connected like that, and this one will be connected like that. That would mean this will be a type two. When I need to connect in circuit, that should be the incoming, and then the outgoing will be something like that. So it's a type 2. So once you get your intermediate, you can establish the, the type, and then you can see how you need to connect it. Remember I said this one is connected in between two two ways. So these two terminals will come to this one here, and the other two will go into another one. So those mainly are the lighting controls that can be used in a normal domestic installation. And then before we proceed on to the sockets, maybe I can show you a view of a socket, how it looks like. We have got this one here, which is a single unit. We have got single units, and there are those ones that come in double, two in one. And it follows the same convention. When it is done like that, it is on. When you flip it here, it is off. And then there are these three protrusions here. Now, the socket outlets we use for domestic insulation are of what we call the shattered type. If you look closely on the pins here, you can see that if I was to insert something, it cannot go right through. So this one's here, it cannot go right through. They are the shutters. Now this to prevent, in case there is installed in the domestic installation, kids poking in things inside here for their own safety so that uh, they cannot get uh, a shock. And then on the earthing terminal here, the pin, the plug top pin, usually the three pins, one of them is longer Oh yeah, yeah, that one suffice. Now this one is the plug top which fits into this one here. As you can see, these two are shorter. The top one is longer. This is the earthing pin on the plug top. It's longer. Now this one is longer such that when we are inserting it into the socket outlet, the long one, which is the earth, will move this protrusion here. There is a mechanism inside here there is this protrusion here, which should be pushed down by the earth pin, and then it opens for the shutters for the life and the neutral to go in. And that's specifically why the earth pin is longer. It will push in that uh, plastic uh, protrusion there, and once it pushes it down, then you can see the shutters in the down one will open, and then the other two can go on. So for domestic insulations, we use we use the shattered type of socket outlets mainly for safety purposes in the domestic installation. 
and of course these ones I recommend them to be installed more than 30 centimeters from the ground such that when we are washing well that one <laughs> about 14 so in the body washing <laughs> water does not splash on the inside that's a recommendation of course earlier there were no limitations you could connect them down down there but nowadays they recommend that should be about 14. Of course, there are those other types which also go on the floor, being of a special type of nature. Now, in our socket, or before I leave the socket outlets, now the three pins here, we have got the earth, which the earth is always on top, and then we have got the two holes for pins down here. Now, the one on the right hand is usually the life, and the one on the left is the neutral. Now, next time I'll come up with an openable plug top and then you can view it like that. So when we do our circuit diagrams, wiring diagrams, we normally have this one on the right and this one on the left, just the way it appears when you view it, when it's mounted on the, on the wall. So this one is a single one. And as you can see, at the back is something like that. The other thing, uh, terminal will go there and then the live into this one here and the neutral into that one marked N. Right? Now, these socket outlets can be wired in radio or ring connection, and then maybe in the ring we want to introduce a spar or to connect a stationary uh, object, maybe like a small grinding machine or something like that one. Now, you need what we call a spar connection. Now in the spar connection, the spar will be connected through a fuse, it's a double pole switching mechanism, and there is a lighting indicator onto that one there. And then at the back, it has got the same connections like we have on the sockets for the neutral. There'll be a neutral in, and there'll be also a neutral, which will be going to the load. And of course, the looping will be on the neutral here. And remember, this one will be connected in a ring circuit. And then you want to tap, maybe to connect another circuit or a standalone object. So there is the neutral in, and then this one go to the load. When you loop, you are doing the ring circuit, that one will be connected here. And then there is the live here, the live in, and the live, the one that goes to the load. And then the looping will be done on the in. Remember, when you are looping, it's the in that we loop. The in well, is written here in and the load, the load, all the right up is down there. And similarly for the earthing, for the looping, we have got the two, one will be for the looping and the other one will be for the circuit that you want to connect, taking off from the ring circuit. So this one is a, uh, we call it a spa connector. It's a more kind of a recent, uh, it was not there before, very common. We simply just used to connect direct from this one to go into the spa. But nowadays it's recommended if you're connecting spa, you better use the spa connector. Right, so that's all for the introduction for our socket outlets. Now, the socket 
outlets which you have just uh, seen a sample of them. In the domestic installation, the socket outlets are installed in convenient positions throughout the installation. So depending on how the room is going to be used, you decide on the number. And then the socket outlets are of the shutter type, which I've shown you, mainly for protection. For protection and also they should be installed about 30 centimeters from ground level. Remember, this one is a recommendation of the IE. It's not necessarily a must. Minimum 30 centimeters going upwards. And then the portable allowances, we won't provide these sockets to connect things. The portable appliances are connected to the socket outlet by a three pin plug Usually it can be used to a maximum of 13 amperes connected to a flexible cable. The plug tops are the ones we have just seen in the other demonstration earlier. So in the room, depending on the room, the usage, you decide on the number. Now those socket outlets are connected in various ways. One of the methods is that they can be connected in the radio connection. Now the radio connections is whereby they are connected one after the other. Now, in our symbols, if you did your symbols assignment, you find that the socket outlets is a switch, uh, is a symbol, like that one. And like the one we saw, it is switched. You can have one without a switch, like that one there, and then you can have a switch, indicating this one is a switched socket outlet. Once you plug in, there's a facility for switching. And then, the three of them, like that one. So that will be a schematic diagram. Now, these are three socket outlets connected in a radio connections. Now, once you see a diagram like that one, sometimes it's not able to know whether it's a radio connections or a ring connection. But the description is the one that will tell you or when you do your wiring, is the when you see that it's either radio or ring. Now these ones here, as you saw our connections, we have got the three pins at the bottom. Now the top pin, the rectangular is uh, vertically, these are the two kind of horizontal. So the three of them will be something like that. And the third one, Like that. Now these ones, they are connected one after the other. So we have said, in this case here, the right hand one is the live, and the true, all the way. When they stored in the wall, when you face it, the, uh, the hole on the right will be live, the one on the left will be the neutral. So this one is fed from the fuse board, coming like that. And then we simply loop in the two together, like that, and like that one. And that finishes in the life. And then for the neutral, it will come down. It's looped inside of that one there. And then looped into that one. And go on to the last one, something like that. And then for the earth, to come on. Oops. That is for the other thing. So this here now will be your socket. Now how many socket outlets you can have a red in a radio connections? Again, the AE has given some recommendations. So in a radio, you can see they are connected one after the other. And of course here you can see that in case you're having all of them plugged in, this portion will be carrying more current than this portion 
and this one will be carrying more than this one. The last one will be carrying the least. As you go back to the source, uh, the current will be heavier in the cables. But good practice, have the same cable kind of throughout. And of course, these ones here, they are not fused. It's the plug top which will be fused. So that will be kind of the radio connection. And this will be our wiring diagram. How the connections would actually look like. What indicated the switching connection. But I've just shown how the connections would be like. So the sockets, I said you can have one like that which is not switched, you can have another one like that which is switched, and sometimes you can have one whereby you need an indicator so that when it is in operation you can tell depending on the gadgets you are using for to plug in into these arrangements. Now the other arrangement now usually referred to as the final ring sub circuit. Now the ring is to difference to separate it from the ring circuit we have in our distribution system. So this is a final ring sub circuit connected in form of a ring. Now in some of the books the circuits would look identical to the other one we have just had. three of them, like that one. But then you find in some of the other books, in some books, they tend to, to indicate the ring by having a connection coming all the way, something like that. But I normally prefer the one line diagram. But you might find that kind of a connection in a in the books that you may come across, the ones I gave you for reference. But usually, the description is the one that will tell you how the connection is. So this will be for the ring circuit. Again, this will be our schematic. In this case, we have drawn a non-switched socket outlets so that when I do my wiring, it does not create confusion. You might ask where is the switch. So the wiring of this one is slightly different like that one, but you begin just like the radio. Let's assume we have got the three sockets. Now with this one, what happens from our power supply, the power sub-circuit, usually the socket outlet is referred to as a power circuit. So in this case here, when you have the live, it comes and goes into that pin there. And from here, it proceeds on to the next one. From here, on to the last socket. And then from here, the wire is looped back all the way to the consumer unit and they are joined at the circuit breaker point or the fusing point, something like that. So it's a ring. So the connection here forms a ring. That is for the live. And in one of our final tests of the installation, when you come across 
if you have a ring circuit, you need to test that that ring is actually continuous. And then the same will follow for the neutral, starting all the way, go in there, come all the way, go in there, come in all the way. And then this one goes all the way back down to the neutral. That's where they are looped. And the same for the other thing. So the three of them form three ring circuits. The earth, the life, and the neutral. Hence the name ring circuit. Now the sizing of the cable of the ring circuit, this one's here again, the AE gives guidelines. And one of the guidelines they say is that if you use 2.5 twin and earth core cable, these ones you can protect them with a fusing of MCB of 30 amperes. And if the area is 100 meters, 100, 100 square meters, 100 square meters, 100 square meters, then you can have an unlimited number of your socket outlets. So that one is for the ring circuit. And then the last arrangement is where you can have a spar connected to the ring. Case, we have kind of the same. This one is number three, which is ring with a spa. Hmm? Oh. Ring with a spa. Now the same, let's use the same three. Can we have another one? Like that. So in this case here in the schematic we say now these are the socket outlet SO1. SO2, SO3, and SO4. Now I said in some books you can have the ring connections being like that one, but I like them when they are done like this ones here, and then you explain. Whereby you say SO1, SO2, and SO3 are connected in ring and S4 is connected to a spa. Now one of the recommendations is that the number of socket outlets connected to the spas, they should not exceed the number of sockets in the ring. So in this case here, if you look at the wiring diagram, so this again will be our schematic. Now if you look at our wiring diagram, so the connections for the ring remains more or less the same like the other one. MCB or a fuse connection. And this one comes to that point. This one to that point. And this one all the way to that one. And then our last con 
the SO4 will be here, connected like that one, and then here, you can have this one connected to that one there for the life, and then for the ring, up to SO3, the other ones which are connected in ring, we loop that one back to the MCB. Like that one, and then we come for the neutral. So the neutral will start from here, from the neutral block, come going to that one. From here, go to the next one. From here, go to the last one. And then that one will be a ring connection all the way back to the neutral terminal. This is live. And then one connection for the socket outlet connected to the spa. And then the last one is the earthing. The earthing again. And come, go into that one. Into that one, go into the next one. Then to complete the ring, that one goes all the way back to the earthing block. And then the earthing for this one here is extended to that socket outlet. Now the spa, usually, this cable here, which connects to the socket outlet, this is the one usually, that cable is the one referred to as the spa. So this socket outlet here is connected to the ring circuit via a spa. So those are the three kind of arrangements we have for the socket outlets. So it's for to decide which one to go for. Of course, there is the ring. This one comes in when some other complications arise, then you need to connect a spa. And then to connect this one here, this why you need the spa connector. So as I said, uh, this one is protected through that one there. When you connect a spa, you connect it through a spa connector. So that is a ring with a spa. So those are the three different kind of connections you are bound to have for the socket outlets. And that's usually how the wiring is done. Okay. Now for the domestic installation, the other equipment we have is the instant water heater. It's instant Or apart from this one, I've also got the other water heaters of various water heater of various types. Now these ones in the house they are connected via Double pole switch with an indicator so that you know when it is on. I think I'll try to show you one when you do the practical bit. So, in this one, all there is to it being a double pole, you have the incoming cable. I'll deal with the life and the neutral, like well, that one. And then for the outgoing. We have an indicator something like that. This is our sometimes it's just referred to as a water heater switch. But what it is, it has got a double pole and it has got some indication, indicator. When you switch it on, it is visible. And then 
the last circuit we have in our domestic installation is the cooker unit. Sorry, the cooker. The electric one. And this is supplied via cooker control unit sometimes it may have with a 5 ampere socket outlet supplied via cooker control unit sometimes with a 5 ampere socket outlet in the cooker itself the cooker is connected via a connector. Remember the cooker control unit will be somewhere at uh, maybe a meter or so from the level, then the cable will run through internally, and then the cable will be connected through the a connector. The cables from the cooker, they go to the connector, and then from the connector, they go to the cooker control unit, and sometimes it may be supplied with a 5 ampere socket outlet. Then, of course, for the cooker, remember in the cooker, there may be five plates, it has got an oven, and it has got a grill. So you find that the cabling for the cooker, the cabling for the cooker, diversity, is applied in sizing the cable and the fuse or MCB. Now there I've talked about uh, diversity Maybe I can uh, give a sentence or two to explain what diversity is. And then we work out an example for a domestic installation. So it's known as diversity factor. Based. Sorry, this this factor takes like that. So this is the first factor. This factor takes into account the fact that all the total loads supplied by a cable will not be in use at the same time.
time. Now, in the case of a cooker unit here, maybe the cooker has got what we call four plates. It has got an oven. It has got a grill. What diversity factor takes into account? Now, the loads we have are the four plates, the oven, and the grill. What diversity factor takes into account is that at no such a time that the person doing the cooking will have all the four plates, the oven, and the grill running at the same time. So it may be, may be one plate, oven, and the grill, or the grill, two plates, something like that. Not all the load will be on at the same time. That's what the diversity factor is applied to. Now the same with the lighting, but the lighting is applied when we are sizing the cable connecting power to our consumer unit. Now again, the IE regulations, they specify these diversity factors, the way you take them into account.